This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi everyone, what's going on? I'm Andrea, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can increase the three-dimensionality and bring out the depth of your images with a simple and very effective editing technique that I really believe is going to take your post-processing to the next level. One of the challenges of photographing landscape is uh, creating images that uh, reflect the right amount of depth and dimension, but sometimes uh, it seems no matter how hard you try and how often you hear well-meaning advice from other photographers, uh, the photo you take almost always come out down flat. Okay, here we have a pan shot from the Icelandic Highlands. Six horizontal images taken with a telephoto lens, an astonishing landscape that I witnessed last year during my winter workshop there. As you can see, I exposed to the right to get this beautiful white high-key landscape photo. The snow is great at filling shadow areas by bouncing sunlight like a a giant reflector and making shadows less intense. For this demonstration, I'm going to use uh, Capture One, but with a few slightly different adjustments. You can apply the same uh, process to other editing programs. So what we want to do is uh, to introduce uh, more contrast to make the snow more intense and give the image more character and oomph. We can use different methods, such as increasing the contrast by dragging the contrast slider to the right, but as you can see, this changes the results only a little. In fact, it doesn't make any significant difference. Alternatively, we can work with the levels or the curve tool to bring out the details and increase the dynamic range of the image, but all these methods are global and not local. So we need a different method that is more flexible, precise and artistic, let's say. That's why today we are going to be using a technique called dodge and burn, my favorite of all time and is probably one of the most important pillars of photo editing, if not the most important. Dodging and burning are a throwback to darkroom film techniques when developers use the masking tools to block parts of the image during development to change their lightness. Dodging and burning are local adjustments that can be used to fine-tune the contrast selectively over different areas of a scene, giving the image a greater impact. Before we get into the dodging and burning technique, I want to optimize the pen shots a little bit. So let me show you an interesting strategy that I occasionally use to change the balance and proportions of the elements in the frame. Okay, to me these mountains are a little too small. The whole frame feels a little squashed vertically. So to make the mountain stand out a little more, I'm going to use a couple of sliders here in the Keystone model. So I'm going to drag the aspect slider all the way to the left. This slider basically stretches or flattens the image vertically. In this case, we want the mountain set to be higher. So we will set the slider to minus 25. Then I'm going to drag the vertical slider to correct the verticals. Of course, we don't have any vertical line here, but this tool really helps uh, create that nice effect on the mountains by stretching them enough to make them more pronounced. Here is the before and here is the after. Love it. So if you are a purist, the settings might not be to your taste. Anyway, that's the way I like it. All right, now that we have corrected the panorama, we can start post-processing the image and create a, a nice 3D effect on snow. First, let's analyze how the light hits the landscape. And we can easily see that the light is coming from the left side of the image. We have this soft side light, which uh, because of its nature is very effective at creating depth in the landscape. To use this technique correctly, it's absolutely important to understand how light behaves. So to add more dimension to the image, we want to adjust the relationship between the highlights and shadows on the different snowy mountains and increase the local contrast according to the actual direction of the light. We want to increase the brightness on this side of the mountains and darken the shadows areas to enhance the three-dimensionality. The overall exposure is great. We could play with things like the levels, increasing the global contrast, but aside from the color shifting we see here, it's generally not going to be what we want to do. Even though technically it's hitting all the right parts of the image, the dodge and burn process is much, much more artistic. It's not simply taking what's in the image and enhancing it, it's more about taking that and then adding a an artistic spin to it. For example, you might want to lighten up this part of the mountain in order to get more of a shaped feel to it, or you might want to darken just this shadowy area. So global adjustments are generally not the way you want to dodge and burn. Okay, in Capture One there are several tools to make local adjustments, such as the gradient or riddle mask tool, but the stands alone brush tool is really the best tool for the job. With this brush, when you paint it, it just goes wherever you put it. So I'm going to create two new empty layers by clicking on the plus icon here. 
one for burning and one for dodging. I recommend you keep uh, the two layers separate so you can control them independently and have a cleaner workflow. As you can see here, I have uh, uh, the floating uh, black and white tool that I will use as a checker to have the transitional areas between highlights and shadow more evident. When we activate the black and white uh, view, we are going to remove uh, all the colors in the image so that we can better judge the brightness distribution in the shot. I also reduced the color brightness of the blue and cyan channel to increase the contrast between the bright and dark areas. So this really helps to better follow the direction of the light when dodging and burning. Okay, now we are going to select the burn layer. Let's reduce the exposure for our brush. Minus one is perfect. Control click or right click to open the pop-up menu. We're going to choose the proper brush size and with a very, very low flow, we're going to start painting things in and darkening the shadow areas. This process needs to be gentle and incremental. We want to build up the contrast gradually. So I wouldn't recommend using a high flow with this technique. That's too aggressive. The basic idea is that you paint freely over the dark areas. You want to create a level of local contrast that suits your vision of the shot, yet looks natural and not overdone. I usually change the brush size frequently according to the size of the area I want to paint over. I'm using the mouse uh, right now, but for dodging and burning, a uh, Wacom tablet uh, has uh, significant advantages over the mouse when it comes to performance and quality. The process is uh, smoother, more precise, and also more enjoyable. I'm continuing to paint uh, all over these uh, dark areas, making them darker. And as you can see, the overall perception of dimension is definitely increasing. Let's deactivate the black and white tool and have a look at how beautiful and effective is this technique. Here is the before. And here is the after. If in some areas the effect is too strong, just select the eraser tool with a low flow setting to reduce the intensity like so. Great. Let's move to the dodge layer. We have the brush tool still selected, but now we want to brighten up the highlights. So we're going to set the exposure of the brush at about uh, plus one. As always, a low flow value. And we are going to start painting following the highlights. We want to increase step by step the brightness of these mountains, intensifying the light coming from the left. Take a look at how we can improve uh, the separation here in the foreground by enhancing these tiny ridges. All right, let's take a look at the before and after. Here is before the dodging and here is the after. Let's turn off also the burn layer to see what we have done so far. Before and after, before and after. So wait. You've probably already noticed there is a, a small problem with this process. And what I mean is that uh, we can't precisely paint uh, freehand around these edges. Sometimes uh, the dodging falls over the shadows and vice versa. I could activate the auto mask function uh, that will give me the ability to control things. Uh, and sometimes that works really well. But since we don't have well-defined edges, in this case, it doesn't quite work effectively and we run the risk to generate artifacts. So to solve this task, we can take advantage of a wonderful feature called Luma Range. And this is really where you're going to start getting more local content. If we click over this button Luma Range, we can see a series of adjustments that allows us to control which range of tones is being adjusted. It basically allows us to create or refine a mask based on the brightness values. This tool may seem a little intimidating, I know, but it's actually quite simple to use. At the top of the bar, we have got two range handles that allows us to control the range of the brightness values you want to affect with the adjustments. For example, if you drag the wide handles towards the middle, we are literally filtering out part of the highlights, leaving them out from the resulting mask. So everything between these two top range handles is included in the Luma mask. At the bottom of the bar, you have uh, the fall off handles that give you control over how quickly the selection fades. So this tool gives us the ability to refine the dodging and burning we did, uh, avoiding to get the disrupted edges uh, between the transitional areas. These are the two sliders that are convenient for fine tuning the edge of the mask. The sensitivity slider controls how hard or soft is the edge of the selection, whereas with the radius, we control the intensity of the sensitivity effect. Okay, let's apply the Luma range to both the adjustment layers to refine the dodge and burn. For the burn layer, I'm gonna filter in out the highlights. So I'm gonna drag this handle in this direction, right about here. 
and we're going to fade out the selection, moving the lower handle to about 230-ish. Then let's increase the sensitivity just a tad for a slightly harder edge and bump the raise up to about uh, 10 to enhance the effect. Can you see how we were able to refine the selection to better target just the shadows and exclude the highlights? This tool is incredibly powerful. Now, let's do the same thing to the dodge level. In this case, we want to filter out the shadows. So we want to drag the top black handle towards the right, right about here. I'm gonna fade it out for a softer transition. And here you can see how we have corrected these uh, areas where we brushed over the sky, for example. It's much, much better now. Before showing you a couple more interesting tricks to finalize the contrast of these panel shots and make the image even more vibrant, I want to thank Skillshare, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a learning platform with a massive library of courses taught by expert teachers and practitioners in a ton of different areas. You may already know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing and illustration, but Skillshare has hundreds of beautiful career-focused and productivity classes too, so the new year is the perfect time to reinvent your goals and and yourself. I personally love the productivity and time management classes that help me optimize my business's organizational process. All the classes are hands-on with projects that you can immediately sink your teeth into so you're learning actively right away and for every class there is also a discussion area where you can ask questions and get feedback. If you didn't know, I've actually just released my new online class called the Modern System to manage your photos like a pro for photographers who use Capture One software and want to stop messing around with pictures scattered everywhere and learn along. A powerful and effective method for creating and keeping a super organized and automated photo archive. So if you want to start going through the class or check out any of the other great classes in Skillshare's library, the first 1000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare membership. I think it's an awesome service. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and being a supporter of this channel. Okay, let's go over the last few adjustments for our shots. I'm generally not a big fan of bright blue tones, so I'm gonna move to the color editor module and I'm gonna start by reducing the saturation and the luminance of the blue tones uh, a tiny bit. I quite love this sort of uh, metallic blue tone and since we are going to increase the contrast with the two following steps, uh, this really helps to mitigate the increase of saturation. Hold down the Option key and click over this arrow icon and we can see the before and after. With the healing tool, I'm gonna remove uh, this line in the snow that bothers me. Here we go, super quick. Next, I want to introduce a slight blue tint to the entire image to emphasize the overall coldness of the image. And to do that, I'm gonna create a new field layer and I'm gonna use the color balance tool to add a slight blue cast to the shadows, also the midtones and highlights. Maybe I can reduce the intensity a notch with the opacity slider. Now I want to make two more adjustments to improve the global contrast. So I'm gonna add another field layer and we're gonna use the curve tool now. I'm going to add an anchor point here right next to the right side of the histogram and another one here on the left side. And then I'll drag the point down about there. Beautiful. I have a full tutorial about using curves here on the channel, so make sure to check it out. All right, with the next adjustments, I want to increase the contrast only on the midtones. So let's create a new field layer. I'm gonna use the levels tools now to increase the contrast. I'm gonna drag the middle and the right handles until I reach uh, the sides of the histogram, like that. And as you can see, the effect is pretty strong and we are blowing out the highlights, but stick with me. Now, I'm gonna select the Luma range and here we are going to set the handles uh, so that they only affect uh, the midtones. If we activate the mask, uh, you can see that we are only working on a limited portion of the brightest values without affecting the very dark or the very bright areas of the shot. Here is the effect before and after. Much punchier and three-dimensional, and we also protect the highlights and blacks. This technique is so powerful, and I use it extensively in many of my landscape images. Okay, finally, as a last step, I wanna give you a bonus tip that isn't necessarily related to the topic of this video, but I think it works pretty well for this shot. I get asked a lot about my technique for creating uh, the glow effect in Capture One. So here it is. It's pretty simple. You need to create a brand new field adjustment level, select uh, the Dehaze eyedropper tool and click on one of the brightest area here in the mountains. At this point, you need to reduce the Dehaze level to about uh, minus 20. This value really depends on the image uh, you are working with. 
then bring the clarity slider to minus uh, 100 and increase the structure to 40, 45 to soften the details and create this uh, glowy effect. Then I'm going to move over the levels module and increase the upper left handle to shift the black point. Now, the image looks too dreamy for my taste, so I have to limit the selection to the highlights. So to do this, I need to apply the luma range again and adjust the black handle right about there and set a very soft roll off and maybe a touch of radius like that. Here is the before and here is the after. A lovely glow effect that adds even more character to the image. Of course, this effect doesn't work with every image, but when you have some sort of dynamic lights in your shots, it works quite beautifully. Okay, let's see where we started. Here is our unprocessed shot, quite stretched and flat. And here is the final product, very dynamic with a great amount of depth and dimension. All right, I hope you got something from this video. For any questions, please drop me a comment down below. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. If you want to improve your photography and develop your vision, check out my website where you can find all my photography workshops and one-to-one -one online courses and shot me an email if you are interested in anything. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.